Hi Lunch Buddies, it's Kat. Today I am continuing to summarize all of the canon Naruto arcs, this arc focusing all about finding the fifth Hokage. So let's get it going! With the third Hokage dead, all of the elders of the Hidden Leaf Village gather together to figure out who will be their next leader. While I'm pretty sure Naruto threw his name in the ring a couple times, they eventually decide that Jiraiya, former student to the late Hokage, would be a better fit. Jiraiya admits he's not really the ruling type and instead offers to go gather up one of his former team members. No, not Orochimaru, his other team member. Jiraiya also offers to bring Naruto along for some much needed training time. While the two of them prepare to leave, two unknown ninja enter the Hidden Leaf Village, Shark Boy and Lava Boy. Just kidding, his real name is Itachi, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because he's the older brother to Sasuke, so you know he's going to be edgy. So Shark Boy and Pink Eye both walk around until they're confronted by two Jonin. Shark Boy and Pink Eye easily take over these elite ninja, and Kakashi has to come to their rescue. In the beginning, it seems like Kakashi and Pink Eye might be evenly matched, because they both have a Sharon gun. Then Pink Eye traps him in an ability called Tsukuyomi and tortures him for three days. Then in a flash, it's over with, and only a second has passed in the real world. An exhausted Kakashi asks them why they came to the Hidden Leaf Village, and Pink Eye admits that they're looking for Naruto for their group called the Akatsuki. Now, having worked with Naruto, Kakashi figures that they're probably not after the kid for his intellectual conversations, so he asks them why they're after the nine-tailed beast trapped within Naruto. But before the conversation can continue, Might Guy arrives on the scene and Shark Boy and Pink Eye aren't really here to start an all out war, so they dip. As the other Jonin bring Kakashi back to rest, they all collectively agree not to tell Sasuke about his brother's return. Oops. Now aware that his brother is going after his friend, Sasuke runs after Naruto and Jiraiya. Cue Naruto sitting alone in a hotel room while Jiraiya goes out to flirt with women. Suddenly there's a knock at the door. Oh. Who could that be? Oh my god. The panic I felt after seeing those two pink eyes peek out from behind the door. Now that's partially because Mal and Arden have been leaving me not so subtle clues that he's like their favorite character and he's the best or whatever, but still. While we wait in suspense, we get some flashbacks of how Sasuke was tormented by his brother Tsukuyomi ability, where he was shown exactly how pink eye murdered their entire clan. It's uh, pretty edgy. <laughs> anyway, Sasuke arrives just on time and launches his ultimate attack, the Chidori at his older brother, who, with little effort as possible, just dodges it. For how awesome and powerful this Chidori ability is supposed to be, the only time it's actually worked is against Gara when he was in his sand cocoon, and even then he wasn't moving and it only left a tiny scratch on him. Needless to say, Sasuke is just having a really rough time, but before Shark Boy and Pink Eye can run away with Naruto, Jiraiya arrives to save the day. While Jiraiya might have had this completely taken care of, Sasuke yells out that he's gonna kill his own brother, and then Pink Eye just utterly wipes him out. There is no fight, it's just Sasuke taking knees to the chest as the wall crumbles behind him. And he didn't need to do this, but Pink Eye then adds on a Tsukuyomi to remind Sasuke of like, Hey man, remember that time I killed our entire clan, our friends, our family, everyone that we've ever loved? Yeah. <laughs> now, with Sasuke bent in half in the corner, looking more like a piece of furniture than an actual human being, Jiraiya then uses a powerful technique which causes both Akatsuki members to flee. Might Guy then arrives on the scene to take Sasuke home and pushes Naruto and Jiraiya to go out and find the next Hokage, as she may be the only one that can help the greatest ninja ever's injuries. As they travel, Jiraiya begins to teach Naruto a powerful new technique called the Rasengan. These next episodes are really slow and not really too interesting, but we do get to see a cool training arc. With a new ability comes a new challenge and... Uh... Great personality! runs into Noodle Arms and nobody wants to see her Pokemon cards. Noodle Arms asks her to use her incredible healing abilities to kill his noodle-like, decaying, soulless arms, and in exchange she'll bring back her little brother as well as her lover from the dead. Great Personality has a week to decide if she'll take him up on the offer, so while she has a nice drink to think things over, Naruto and Jiraiya berate her about coming back to the village to become their Hokage. She tells them no, and then Naruto begins to run his mouth, which only ends up with him in the dirt. Then Great Personality tells him to die. 
no, seriously, she tells him that if he can master the Rasengan within one week, then she'll give him this priceless necklace. But this necklace is basically cursed because both her younger brother and her lover died while holding it. She would rather see Naruto dead than deal with any more of him. So, for the next week while Naruto trains, Great Personality has to decide if she wants to go back and save her village, or if she wants to bring back her younger brother and her lover. The last day of training and Naruto has made no progress, Great Personality drugs Jiraiya, that way she can sneak out and go meet up with Noodle Arms. But right before she goes to heal his arms, nobody wants to see her Pokemon card stops her as he had seen her true intent was to kill Noodle Arms, so everybody just engages in combat. Everything seems to be going in Great Personality's favor especially when Jiraiya, Naruto, and her assistant Plain Jane show up. And then no one wants to see her Pokemon cards uses her extreme fear of blood against her, taking her out of the fight. So it's up to Jiraiya to defeat Noodle Arms and Naruto and Plain Jane to go up against nobody wants to see her Pokemon cards. I'll admit, this fight really didn't resonate with me. It's got some cool parts to it, but it's not one of my favorites. So I won't go over it in detail, but in the end, Naruto fulfills his promise by completing a Rasengan Jutsu. Great Personality understands her role as the soon-to-be fifth Hokage, and Noodle Arms and Nobody Wants to See Your Pokemon cards make their escape. After Naruto is healed from his injuries, he continues to shit-talk Great Personality, saying she'll never be worthy of being Hokage, things of that sort. So they go outside to have another one-on-one -on -one battle, and instead of decking him across the face like what he deserves, Great Personality gives him a kiss on the forehead because he reminds her of her little brother or something like that. I still think he deserved to be punched across the face, but growth or something, I don't, I don't know. Once everyone returns to the Hidden Leaf Village, Great Personality avoids all of her duties and continues towards the hospital where she helps Kakashi and Sasuke's minds recover from the damage done by Pink Eye's Sukuyomi. She also goes to help out the greatest ninja ever. Great Personality is inaugurated in as Hokage and this arc actually ends up on a happy note. Except for Sasuke, who keeps getting his shit kicked in and really can't seem to catch a break while Naruto goes off on happy fun time adventures. I sense a storm brewing. Alrighty, lunch buddies, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit all those buttons that everyone else bugs you about. I would love for you to join the lunch table. Make sure you hit that notification bell especially, that way you can follow us for that last canon arc of Naruto. We'll see you next time.